I'm Andrew Bedford, co-CEO of the Ginger Agency here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and welcome to the latest edition of the Ginger Content Series. So today we are super lucky to be joined by Frank Palmer, who is the chair of Palmer Stamness DBB in Vancouver. This is one of Canada's leading marketing agencies representing brands from McDonald's Canada through to leading financial institutions. Um, and before this role, Frank was the CEO of DDB Canada, leading a team of agencies and offices across the country uh, with more than uh, 750 marketing creative professionals. So I'm about to hop on a call with Frank. So um, listen in and, and I hope you enjoy it. So today um, we're lucky to be joined by um, Frank Palmer um, with um, Palmer Stamness DDB in Vancouver. And uh, Frank has a incredible amount of experience in the marketing industry in Canada. And um, he's definitely, um, a bit of a legend if you ask me. So yeah, so I just wanted to kind of jump on today and ask some questions and talk about the industry. Well, hopefully I can help you. Pleased to be here. So let's take it to um, your time with DDB Canada and leading that organization. Was it 600, um, a complement of 600 people? About 750. 750 people. So I had a, I had a, um, uh, in Anderson advertising, I had about 170, say, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Red Urban had uh, maybe 50. And then if you add up all the offices, uh, Vancouver had 170, mm -hmm. and and Edmonton had uh, 45. We were out of Ed, we were out of uh, Calgary at that time in Winnipeg, and then. Uh, we had 270 in uh, DDB Toronto and about 20 in Montreal. So if you add it all up, it's probably 700, 750, somewhere in there. Right. So if you had to, to boil that down to one piece of leadership advice that you learned um, through that, that time, what would it be? Well, I've always been pretty good at hiring people better than me. And, uh, you know, you, you just have to know what you're good at. I was pretty good at delegating. And uh, I, I would say that just hire good people, hire better people, treat them well, um, be friendly, and 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 at least and, and be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, work hard, be nice. It's blurry there, but it says it on that's our. Where, that's where I was going. Be nice. I mean, it's the fact is is that you get a lot more uh, people liking you if you treat them well. You know, and it, it's always. Uh, uh, one of the things that people have said to me, Frank, you, you're really good at staying in touch. I said, yeah, yeah. I never, I never take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about your, your current role. I know you've been through um, some, some changes in the last, you know, few years and, and moved around a bit. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I, um, I, I can go back 50 years cause I've been in this business a long time and uh like a lot of small companies, we we're basically kind of the local agency that would be more like the the home hardware's, you know. And then over a period of time, we turned into Home Depot, you know. And uh, so we grew our business uh, over the years. So uh, I when I sold my company, I had uh, to DDB or Omnicom. I had offices in Vancouver, Victoria, Winnipeg, Calgary, and Edmonton. And uh, it, it was of interest to DDB because we had a number of big accounts, including McDonald's, which they were most interested in. And uh, I had looked at selling my company to a number of uh, multinationals at one point in time, because you get to that point about if you're going to have any kind of growth, you, you, you probably need to be with somebody that's uh, much bigger. And it turned out that a number of agencies that I met made me feel even smaller than we were. But DDB made me feel like I was a somebody. Mm -hmm. But they made me feel important. So we did a deal with DDB. And for the last 20 years, I was uh, running all of Canada uh, with offices also in uh, now in Toronto and Montreal. And I also had um, Anderson DDB, which is healthcare, and another agency called Red Urban. So I had three brands. And then uh, a new president came into... Uh, a DDB by the name of Wendy Clark, and she said, Frank, you're getting a little old, uh, maybe we should bring in some youth, somebody younger. And I said, well, as long as you treat me properly, I'll uh, leave. And I, so I left DDB after 20 years and uh, decided that I was going to have uh, 
just sort of by myself a consultancy because I didn't want to stay home because I'm a bit of a workaholic and I can't see myself staying at home and I'm not much of a golfer and I did have a bit of a hobby painting and still do you know like uh, and, and so a partner of mine that I used to have uh, ownership in uh, Bob Stamnus uh, who who uh, on an elevator, it was called Elevator Strategy. And he said, well, look, Frank, you, you know, you, you need a place to sit. And I said, yeah. He said, well, why don't you spare some time and come over and spend some time with me here and, and work out of it. I said, great. And, and then out of the blues, I get a phone call uh, from Chuck Brimer, who was now the, he was the chairman of DDB Worldwide. And he said, how would you like to come back <laughs> to DDB? Um, Wendy Clark had left and went to Dens too. He said, I'd like you to come back. And I said, doing what? He said, well, take over and run the company. I said, I don't want to do that. He said, why? I said, it's, it's a big job, and, 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 um, but I can help you out and I can get you somebody to run it, but I'll take over the Vancouver office. As of uh, nine months ago, um, I, I said to my partner, you, you be, uh, you, I'll be the chairman. Because you know I've been around a long time, you'd be the president and CEO, and so now we're up to thirty employees now again already, and I'm going to work every day like yourself and enjoying it, you know. So back in the world again. Nice. But after fifty odd years, I'm still doing it, you know. Great. So it's been a it's been a great ride, and uh, and I'm enjoying it. We've got some great clients, and we're out there pitching like everybody else, but. What we're trying to build is not a traditional agency like what you uh, may think that they are, because our world has changed, and particularly more with COVID. I think the structure of the agencies going forward, they have to really know what they are and what they want to be, because there's just so many agencies out there doing the same thing. It's been uh, enjoyment coming to work, uh, even though today there's uh, three people here, three people in the office, you know. I wish we could all get back together again because it's very difficult to build an agency culture when people are working from home. Absolutely. How was the transition um, when all this first started to, to kind of to shift gears on, on work style? Uh, I just think now more than ever before, COVID has opened our minds to be able to do things differently that we wouldn't have tried before. Absolutely. You know, we know now that we can work from home. We wouldn't have tried that. Yep. Well, it's a matter of continuing that and, and also finding other ways to make it work better for ourselves. So it's a, it's very interesting times I'm finding. You know, for me, I can't wait to get people back into the office because we, we would have, uh, you know, hot dog Fridays and uh, pizza and, you know, trying to build a, a company that's a joy to go to every day. And I'm sure you try to do the same thing at your place. And, and, uh, it's hard to do that. You know, you're, you're kind of celebrating on Zooms, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, we're making it work. We're in the process now of trying to uh, figure out how to get people back to work, even though we believe it will be kind of a hybrid situation. Some people don't want to come back to work. Um, I, I like seeing people. I like seeing people around the office. Yeah. So maybe tell me a bit about the, um, the, uh, the the brands and the, the clients you're working with right now? What would be the highlight reel? Well, we're still working with McDonald's. Uh, we're working uh, with a telco out here called Telus. I don't, uh, you may have Telus there too, and along yep. with Bill and Shaw, Shaw and others. Uh, we're working with uh, Remax and uh, working with the lotteries. Um, we're trying to build our own um, ecosystem so that we're not necessarily waiting around for RFPs to come from government and or other clients because you get in yourself into a race, you know, and, and uh, when you get into an RFP process, you're up against another 10 or 20 agencies in some cases. And, and not often do you win that based on your, your, how good you are. You, you win it on how low you are as far as cost. Well, I don't think that's the best deal for clients because anybody can buy low. And uh, so what we want to do is we're, we're creating a, uh, some of our own opportunities. Like we've created what we call the PS Hive. 
And that is a company that we go out and we say to a young uh, company who an entrepreneur says, look, we need your help. So we say, we'll give you space in our building and we'll give you advice and we'll give you counseling and mentoring. But uh, the starting point is that we want uh, 15% ownership of your company to start with. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it, we'll provide you with the rest for free and free rent. And then if we help build your business, uh, we get paid based on a success. And so we've got two or three companies that we're working with in that area now. And, uh, and we've also are creating a company called the Ethical Food Group. And uh, we're working with uh, companies that are in energy drinks. Uh, we're launching a beer, working with plant-based foods. So a lot of these things that we're working with will never go to an RFP because we have an interest in them. So what we're doing is pretty exciting because we're, we're very entrepreneurial and, and these businesses that we're creating are, are quite exciting because we can watch them grow. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'll ask you another question. So I believe you got started as an illustrator. Is that true? But I went to the Vancouver School of Art, uh, which is now called Emily Carr for uh, two years. And then that's how I started off in the business as an artist. I got a job at a te television station right out of school. So what do you think about the change? If you could like quickly reflect on the world of manually preparing camera ready artwork to today where we have, I don't know, the, the CG abilities and, you know, the ability to create a 3D rendering of, we can essentially create anything. When I went to art school, um, if you were doing a name of a store and, 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 and it was Frank's uh, hardware, uh, you had to pick a type style and you had to draw it with a, with a pen and a pencil and you had to do it all by hand. And back then, people won't remember that there was lead type that used to come out of a machine that when you typed everything in the lead would come down. Well, then after I learned how to do all of that, there was this other process that came in called Letraset. Letraset was rubbing down the letters where you could rub down Frank's hardware. Then after that, the computer would do it all for you. But I'll tell you, it's, it's really remarkable what you can do today because you can watch some of these new animated uh, films and you, you, swear, you swear that they were alive. It's so unbelievably good. I mean, so I'm not knocking what they can do today because they can do a lot more than I could ever figure out. But I still believe that uh, there's still a lot of value in, in being able to draw, just being able to draw. Right. Yeah. So I would, I would still recommend that students go back to school to learn how to do that. Yeah. I, I feel like stylistically, I think the world peaked around 1967. Now, the world's improved a lot in a lot of ways since then, but I think the advent of desktop publishing may be pulled design and, and digital art in a different direction that was off track from evolution of art up till that point. And I think we're now just getting back to the point where we're um, designed for the sake of, you know, design as a, as a sophisticated career choice versus anyone who can open Photoshop. So uh, I'm, I've been excited to see the return to the, you know, tr more of traditional artistic sense. So, so would I, I mean, um, you know, I, I try to watch my tongue at times uh, when I see certain artwork, uh, you know, uh, Jackson Pollock used to drop paint on the floor and drip it on the floor and, and you know, and he'd come up with a painting and somebody would say, I can do that. I said, well, try, go ahead and try. Mm -hmm. He learned how to drip paint on the floor and, and made it look interesting. Uh, you try to do that. Somebody says they show me a, a abstract painting. They go, "Oh, I can do that." Try. There still is a skill to it. Nice, but it, I think that being a, being inquisitive, always find finding a different way to do things. You know, mm -hmm. is 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 what makes us differently in this business. Because if clients come to us for 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 uh, solving their problems they know they can't solve them so that's why they come to us and i think the thing is we just have to be able to be in a position to charge them what's fair 
Exactly. And to be people that know exactly what to do and when to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, but I'm, 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 as I said, I'm still having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing nice. after all these years, you know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. To be an agency uh, in a market leading position, it means you've got a team full of amazing people that could easily find a place somewhere else. Um, so to be at the helm of an organization of so many talented people on the top of their game, like what are some pieces of advice for, for keeping that team together, you know, treating them right and compensation, but. <clears throat> well, you know, I, had some, I had somebody the other day that said, um, if you're running an organization where people feel like they're valued, feeling valued and saying thank you for the work being done, uh, the, people, the person said to me, I'd rather work for that company making less money than working for a company making more money where you're not treated properly. And, and I think that our organization not only treated them well and paid them well. And if you do that, you're going to have a lot of loyalty with people who never want to leave. I mean, when, when I, uh, when, when I, I had people that were 25 years, 30 years, I mean, I don't know what the average would have been. Maybe the average would have been five or seven or 10 years. People didn't leave. And they, and, and when, when I sold the company and, and, and the president at the time of, of DDB was a guy by the name of Ken Case. Now, Ken Case was the president of Worldwide DDB. He and I became really good friends. He was my boss, but I was never treated like I was an employee. And when he came to our offices, he said, I can feel the culture and the energy in your paint in the wall. I like that. It's a great way to put it. That's how that's how our company ran people wanted to be there mm -hmm. people knew that i was going to have fun with them and, and probably play practical jokes and they never knew when their phone was going to be foamed when they had a shaving cream and they put it up to their phone and their ear would be full of shaving cream and i don't know i think we probably threw away a head, 100 headsets because they couldn't be fixed with that foam that was in the but i didn't care <laughs> but i mean it's it, it's the atmosphere that you build around the company i said i take what i do seriously i don't take what i do i don't take myself seriously but i damn I'll, um, i'm a very competitive guy and i'm out to win and i won't take prisoners i'm telling you right now as fun as fun as i may be when i get into a pitch i will Bob Stam has said the difference between Frank and everybody else is Frank goes to work after the pitch has been made. Right. I work the, I work, I work it after the pitch has been made hmm. because that's where you end up winning. Right. That's good advice. Anybody in the Never stop. If just because you made your presentation doesn't mean you should stop that. You got to keep working it. All right. I got to write that one down. Um, okay. Um, now you've worked on a lot of campaigns throughout your career. Is there a favorite? Oh, there's a number of them. I mean, um, I think that uh, I mentioned, I do this thing called Frankly Speaking mm -hmm. weekly. It's a weekly article that I, I said, I don't know where you get it or not, but I send it out every week. Um, I, I, I think that the last week, this week's was uh, talking about uh, <clears throat> in 1995, we, we were handling the Hudson Bay Company and it was their 325th anniversary. And um, one of the things that we had discovered uh, 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 that we were going to do is we were going to hold a, uh, I came up with the thought of having a concert, an outside concert, and we'd hire all these Canadian acts because uh, and we would hold this outdoor rock and roll concert. Well, have I ever done one of those? No, but doesn't mean to say we shouldn't try. So we ended up <clears throat> having this concert in big called Big Sky in uh, Alberta, and uh, I had gone out and uh, went through this uh, other friend that I had hired to do all the talent. But we had uh, Ann Murray and uh, Brian Adams and putting on this huge concert with three days and i'd been backstage and i sort of met all these artists and people and 
And so that was one of those kind of things that I forgot about doing. But I think that if you look at some of the commercials, uh, one of the ones that I can remark on uh, was when we did the Greyhound Air Launch. And uh, we had come up with the idea where the Greyhound dog uh, goes and whizzes on the front wheel of the airplane and marking new territory was the line. And uh, I had to go and sell that to uh, a bunch of board members in Greyhound Air. And, and it turned out that there was like about 20 of these gentlemen that would have been my age probably now, stiff, you know, stiff, and you know, I had to walk in and sell this. And I walked in and I sh showed them what was happening. The dog would go over and do this. And, and, and the silence seemed like forever. It was, you know, about 20 seconds. And then one of the board members said, this is probably the best damn commercial I've ever seen. And the rest of the board members all clapped and we got to do the commercial. And, and it turned out to be one of the better ones, even though Greyhound Air got started off too late and the company didn't survive. But the interesting thing about that commercial was <clears throat> we actually had the dog practice on a wheel that wasn't on the airplane because if the dog had got loose at the airport, right. but it was uh, because we had practiced with the dog before that, it was one take. Dog went out, did his job, and uh, that was it. The commercial was all done in one take. And uh, so, I mean, there's all kinds of these memories that come up over time when people ask me questions. And, uh, uh, you know, there's all kinds of these great memories now that I'm starting to think about it. It's starting to worry me a little bit because it's kind of like, what am I doing? I'm writing the information on my epitaph. I'm putting a, what would you have on your tombstone, Frank? You know, mm -hmm. you, know it, you know, it's... Uh, um anyways it's uh, I, don't, I i appreciate you taking the time to talk to me you know well it's interesting like we met through maybe we'll close with a quick question around decan so we met through the canadian agency network um ginger is one of the the newer members of that network and it's been around since um the 60s i think and uh, uh 24 agencies independent marketing agencies across canada um so maybe tell me a bit about why you think decan is such a wonderful organization it's kind of like what you're asking me now. You can probably ask the other 25 or 30 members of about experiences, what worked and what didn't work. Um, I think TCAN is a, a great association that if you're stuck and you want to find out something and somebody who's got some information on a particular client or service or uh, you know, where you don't know something, you can ask somebody and they're going to give you the advice. I think it's a network of fellowship uh, where we're all entrepreneurs and we're all learning from each other. So I think that's where the value comes in. I use, I talked to the, I was talking to one of the members just before our call today and uh, asking for some advice on something. So even myself, I, I don't look at myself knowing all the answers. You know, somebody else has worked on something that gives them, gives me more experience because we don't have that experience. So use it for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a network of, 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 uh, of uh, people who have uh, done things uh, right and probably more times wrong. Right. Well, that's what, that's what growing a business is all about is uh, it's, it's probably more about how you handle losing and how you learn from that versus the wins. So that's yeah. how you get to the wins. So, yeah, I, I, we've lost more than we've won mm -hmm. and, and you just got to get up. Right. And do it again. Yeah. So, so uh, for me, it's just a matter of getting up and being better next time at what we do. Exactly. Okay. Well, I think we're coming to the end of our time now. Any um, parting words or parting thoughts? No, I'm just glad that uh, at, at uh, my stage in career in life that people are interested in still talking to me, you know. Well, thanks for your time today. Um, it's great chatting. I'll, uh, I'll tag you in the post when it goes out. And uh, I look forward to uh, the next time I see you on the TCAN call or at the next TCAN conference. Yeah, great. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.